finding the second derivative of the square root of sine x is going to require the chain rule, because it's a composite function, sine x inside the square root function, then we're also going to need the product rule. Let's see how it goes. We'll begin with some simple rewriting. The second derivative of the square root of sine x is just the derivative of the derivative of the square root of sine x. Then it will be easiest to rewrite that square root as a rational power. The square root of sine x is the same as sine x to the one half. Now we can take the first derivative by using the chain rule. We begin with f prime of g of x. That's the derivative of the outside function, which is the power of one half, leaving the inside function unchanged. We'll use the power rule for this, so bring the power of one half out front as a factor, and then reduce the power by one. So we have one half times sine x, leaving the inside function unchanged, and then one half minus one gives us our new power of negative one half. We then have to multiply by g prime, the derivative of the inside function, which is cosine x. This is the first derivative, so now we can take the derivative of this to find our second derivative. To take the derivative of this, let's first just bring the one half out front and then take the derivative of what remains. What remains is a product, and so we'll have to use the product rule, f prime g plus g prime f. Let's say that f is sine x to the negative half, and g is cosine x. Then the first part of the product rule is f prime g, so again we're using the chain rule. The derivative of sine x to the negative half, bring the negative half out front, so negative one half times sine x, leaving the inside function unchanged, and then reduce the power by one, so now negative three halves but then you've got to multiply by the derivative of the inside function. The derivative of sine x is cosine x. So all of this is f prime, but we also have to multiply by g, hence we have another factor of cosine there. So that's f prime g. Then we have to add g prime f. If g is cosine, then g prime is negative sine. And then we just multiply that by f, which is sine x to the negative half. And note how we have that factor of one half sitting outside the brackets. So now we'll have to distribute that and do some simplification. And that brings us to this final answer. One half times negative one half is negative one fourth. Then we have sine x to the negative three halves. And cosine times cosine gives us that cosine squared. Then the one half distributes over here. So we have minus one half. And then we have to use our exponent rules, sine x to the 1 times sine x to the negative half. Well, for that, we just add the exponents. 1 plus negative half gives us the exponent of positive half. So minus 1 half sine x to the 1 half. And that's the second derivative of the square root of sine x. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and be sure to check out my Calculus 1 course and Calculus 1 exercises playlists in the description for more. Thanks for watching. Stressed out, Swinky, I'm stressed out. Sounds like you've been stressed out. Tell me what you're stressed about. Love. Stressed out, honey, I've been stressed out lately. Don't know what's what, don't know what I'm stressed about. Stressed out, sweetie, I'm stressed out. Sounds like you've been stressed out. Tell me what you're stressed about.